Welcome everyone, my name is Helen. This is the Shrimpy Miggy channel. This is me with freshly washed hair and one little curl that always pops out for some reason. Do you guys get that as well? So I've just freshly washed my hair here. I'm taking off my terry cloth hair turban and I'm just fluffing out my hair. Now I'm using this comb that is actually for a wig. I like to use it and I actually have worn wigs. I don't wear them often. I'm just gonna pop up something here so you can see. I did make this video called $38 wig versus $380 wig. And um, that hair looks way better than my own hair probably ever will. But anyhow, here I go. I just comb through and I grab the hair. Oh, I'm showing you hair. This is the hair that has fallen out. Not too much, a few strands here. I've actually made a video about how to lose less hair in the shower, so go ahead and watch that too. Oh my gosh, you know what? My bald spot is like super, my thinning spot is super visible here when my hair is wet. So if your hair looks more visible, like if you're sort of balding and thinning spots look way more visible when your hair is wet, that's totally normal. The key is just to not concentrate on that, okay? Do not get fixated on what your hair looks like when it's wet because unless you're like, I don't know, a swim instructor, your hair is not gonna be wet all the time. Your hair is mostly gonna be dry. Okay, so here I am drying out my hair. This is a sort of a normal routine that I'm taking you through of what I would do any morning where I'm just gonna be getting ready and um, you know going to work or whatever the case may be. In this case, it's a Saturday because I make these videos on a Saturday and Sunday. I'm using low settings. I don't overdo it with the um, hot air, even though it is, if you look out that window, you see it's winter time. There are no leaves on that tree, so it's cold out. So I don't like having hair too wet. Oh my gosh, my hair's looking really thin back there. Oof, good thing that I cover it most of the time. And so I kind of just shape it generally the way that I want it to go at this point. Um, and I fluff it and I just use my hands to almost kind of help it go a little quicker. And I have a, just an inexpensive hair dryer. I do not have a Dyson hair dryer. Do any of you guys have a Dyson hair dryer? Do you love it? Is it worth getting? It is so expensive. I think I paid $25 for this thing and I've had it for so long, like it's just worked perfectly well for probably about 10 years right now. So I just, it's not something that I ever invest in. I have expensive hair tools. This is not one of them though. Oh my goodness, look at that spot. Okay, but don't worry, we're gonna fix that all up. Yep, the thinning spot in the back of my hair is totally visible. The rest of my hair is pretty thick though. So yeah, you can see me sort of working through that. And I just kinda, yeah, I'm showing it to you guys here. Just gonna work through this quickly. Now, if you don't wanna see me do all of this and you wanna skip ahead to the Rogaine segment of that, go ahead and skip to, oh my gosh, I'm doing my dance. Go ahead and skip to about the 10 minute mark of this video and you'll see more about the actual Rogaine application because what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tell you guys some, some tips along the way, but what I'm mostly concentrating on the first part of this video is you're just gonna see me do sort of my morning makeup routine. And I'll be throwing in some tips for you guys as well so that hopefully won't be a complete waste of time. Where have I gone? I think I've gone to grab something. Yeah, I'm back with, um, gosh, what am I back with? I'm looking at myself in the mirror. <laughs> I bent down to get something from the cupboard underneath my sink. Helen, what are you doing, girl? What? Yes, okay, that's hair. I'm slow in the morning, people. I'm actually, I didn't. I decided to do this like as a voiceover because I just, like first thing in the morning, I do not have the chirpy energy that I need to be making. Like I'm so low energy first thing in the morning and let me guys know if you guys are like this as well, but there's just no way that I would have been able to tape like first thing in the morning. It's so dark outside. Um, I wouldn't have been able to like tape with the amount of energy that I need. You don't wanna hear me sounding all like slow and with a scratchy voice. So uh, here I am. Okay, I'm pinning my hair back. This is what I always do because I'm gonna be putting on my foundation. So I get that hair pinned up. Oh my gosh, that spot is really visible, but you guys are gonna see later, and I'm talking about the spot on the top of my head. You can see it really well right now, but you'll see the way I end up parting my hair is gonna be different. And so that's one of my tips for you. So thanks for listening to this part. What I wanna say, oh, here's all my makeup. I try not to let it overfill. Like when it starts to get to be too much for this basket, I start to thin it out because I like to call myself a minimalist. You know, Marie Kondo would be proud. I try not to have things that I don't use. I try and keep all my beauty stuff to that basket. Um, so the tip I was gonna say that I got away from there was just like, you'll see, I'm gonna part my hair completely differently from how it normally wants to part. And the reason for that, obviously, is because I wanna hide that bald spot. Uh, because I really don't want to look at that, obviously. And so there's just a way that I part my hair that will make it kind of disappear. You'll see it's almost like magic. You know, call it a comb over if you will. That's fine too. Okay, so I'm putting on my 
foundation I mixed, oh no, sorry, I think I'm just putting on my primer. I actually used this brush, which is a primer brush. I did not know such a thing existed, but I primed my face a bit because I feel like my foundation clings much, much better. I'm just using an inexpensive Revlon primer here because I feel like it gets covered, like, I don't know, you have your beauty YouTubers like Tati who like expound certain expensive primers and um, I don't know, I don't feel like I've had expensive ones, I've had inexpensive ones, I don't feel like the expensive primers work a lot better. Do you guys agree, disagree? What primer should I be using? I'd like to know as well. I am not a beauty YouTuber, I'm more of a hair YouTuber as you guys know. So um, yeah, primers are not my area of expertise. I've got two different foundation types you'll see. I'm putting in two different types here, sort of a lighter summer color and a little bit of a darker color because I have a tiny bit of my summer color left. But as we get to more towards February, I will be using the lighter color. Right now I blend them together and I love these two foundations together. Just use this brush and I just work it in really, really good. Here I go. I don't have any lipstick on or anything else like that. I've not put my eyes on. My first step is always my foundation. So that's what I'm doing here, working it in really good. So here's another tip. A little while ago, I went to the hairdresser and I just got all these wispy little ends trimmed out of the bottom of my hair because they were just doing me no favors. The ends of my hair were really wispy because I've been growing out from sort of like a pixie cut. And so when you do that, you get all these really weird wispy ends. And um, I was kind of wondering whether my hair would look shorter when she did that. But let me tell you, she did a great job. She did not over trim it. So it looks the same. Just the wispy bits are gone. So I find it look it's looking much healthier now and uh, it's finally getting to a length where I'm happy with it. Okay, so I've got my eyebrows on here. I think I just put on a bit of powder underneath my eyes. I like to do a little tiny bit of baking. I do like a mini bake. I put on a bit of concealer and then I dab a little bit of powder under there and I feel like I don't normally do this for just like if I were going to work, but if I'm gonna be on camera, I like to get down on that area a bit and sort of take the shine out. And uh, yeah, I'm just doing some finishing touches with my foundation here. I think I have eyeshadow on is ready and it looks like I've got my eyeliner on as well. And I'm saying this looks like, etc. so forth because I'm taping this a couple days in the future. So I made this video a couple days ago and so uh, I'm just like voice doing a voiceover. I hope you guys are enjoying this. So far I put too much blush on and now I look like a clown. And so I'm gonna take that down with this powder brush and hopefully make it look a bit more naturalistic. Yep, yeah, I'm blending that in really good. And so this is a pretty typical morning for me when I wash my hair. I don't wash my hair every day. I'm one of these every second day people. And so let me tell you, when I was growing up, let me know if this resonates for you. I had such an embarrassment that I washed my hair only every second day. There was just no way I could wash my hair every day though. It took too long to dry. I had too much hair and it took, oh, great view of my bald spot. Um, it took too long for me to dry it, so I'd only do it every second day, and I just felt like it didn't need it. It was just a waste of time and shampoo and energy, and I, I'd say water, but I didn't care that much. I, I don't think I was like that aware of water usage when I was like in my teens and early 20s. Um, and to this day, I still only wash my hair every second day. More than that, my hair just gets kind of greasy and clumpy, and it doesn't look great. I just feel it's its best every second day. And I find like when you use Rogaine as well, it is good to, um, to just, like get that build off out for me. Everybody's different. Okay, so I was just putting on some highlighter, a little bit of contour, buffing that out a bit more. You know, you've seen all the beauty YouTubers do this. I am not like so great at makeup, as you can see here. I'm okay at makeup. Like it's not really my bag. I am. <laughs> I struggle like everybody else who's just. You know, your face starts to change. You're trying to change your routine with it. And so I'm just doing my best, people. I, I do an okay job, but I could always I could always be better at it. I'm always trying to learn, and that's what YouTube's so great for, right? So what am I going to do here? I think I'm putting on some lipstick. Not too sure. Let's have a look. Yes, okay. I think I did. And what I've got here is a little piece of toilet paper. Here's a little trick. Oh, I've got a blend. Yeah, that's what I'm doing here. I use toilet paper, people. I have my own dedicated roll of beauty toilet paper and it's smaller than a Kleenex or a tissue, so you don't need as much. It has that quilted pattern, well, some toilet papers do, um, and I just find it's nice and small. I don't need so much of it. If you have one roll of toilet paper, you can have it for a long time. This is not the one that everybody's using to do their business with. This is just my own dedicated toilet paper roll that I use instead of always grabbing Kleenex because sometimes you only just need to dab something and you're gonna use a whole Kleenex just to dab 
a tiny bit of brow pencil off on it or a tiny bit of the mascara at the end of the tube. Like it just feels like a waste to grab a whole Kleenex to use just that. And I know you can fold it up and like reuse it. It just, I just don't need a whole Kleenex, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I just use a toilet roll and I find it's actually more absorbent and works better than Kleenex. So that is my toilet paper tip. I never thought I would have a toilet paper tip in a YouTube video, but uh, hey, you know, here we go. Okay, so now it's time to really start dealing with my hair. I've had it up in these two little mini butterfly clips I'm showing you. Ooh, uh, ooh. But if I do this, you see it's not as visible, but now you see it really good. So it's good that I'm bending over like this, people. So you can see I still, I still have, you know, a spot where my hair is not filled in, Rogaine or not. I'm going to show you. I'm parting it like this. This is kind of where my hair wants to part, right? If I were just to leave it to its own devices, it would definitely part here. And I will part it here for the time being because I'm going to be moving on to step two of this whole enterprise. And uh, thank you so much for following me along here. This is where I start putting in the Rogaine. Here we go. I like to put in some dots. If I'm doing it this way, I'm just going to do the front of my hair right now. I'm deliberately leaving the back out because I'm going to show you what to do with liquid. So this is brand name Rogaine that I'm using. I'm going to isolate the spots that I think need some help. You know, I'm trying to fill in my temples these days. So I'm just trying to put the Rogaine in there and I'm going to flip it here to the other side. I'm going to put a few dots in like this. The Rogaine actual instructions tell you to put it on a plate and put a half of a cap full. And I did that for a short time when I started using Rogaine, but then I was like, what? I gotta have an extra plate around. I gotta clean this plate. The plate got dusty, dirty, gross. Am I gonna be going down and get to the kitchen and getting a plate every single time? No, I am not. So I learned that little routine that I just showed you, that little trick where I just invert it and just put little dots on. You know, do you know, do I know if it's enough? No, I don't, but I guesstimate. You know, if I'm covering the spots and I'm rubbing it in pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I've switched over to generic liquid. I got this at Target. So inexpensive. Oh my gosh. And so I would not normally ever use two. I don't want you guys thinking that I put the foam on and then I put the liquid. I totally don't. I just wanted to show you two different techniques here with my running routine. So if I were doing the liquid, I would just be sticking strictly with the liquid. Um, so I'm just going to really work it in here with my hands and get it into all that spots and all those spots on my head and work it in really, really good. I just spent some time massaging it and making sure it gets in. Ooh, into that spot, which is, ooh, that's hard to look at, people. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay, but it doesn't look too bad when I do it like this. But let me tell you, if you have hair loss in your temples, this is a tough look, right? A ponytail is a tough look because all of your temples, it shows. And so the solution for that is not to give up wearing ponytails. It's just to spray it with root spray, which I'm not going to do. Oh, look, I've got some good growth now. My hair is kind of like at a medium density my um, balding spots are pretty covered. So I could wear a ponytail. I'm just not in the mood for it right now. I'm going to continue to fluff this in. So yeah, this is how I put in the Rogaine. And stay tuned for the rest of the styling. Stay tuned for, oh, that's me saying, no, no, no. We don't wear a part like this. We're not going to go out like this. My hair is so messy. I have sort of like a wavy hair kind of as you can see. There's like a bit of uneven wave. I love this tool. I've had it for 10 years now. This is a hot air brush, right? This is a kind of higher end tool. You know, I think I paid maybe $80, but you can get it for cheaper now. Um, and I love this tool. I swear by it to really smooth out my hair. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I've plugged it in now. And uh, what am I looking for? Am I looking for some product? No, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing my ear. My ear must be itchy. Oh, okay, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> doing this voiceover after the fact because I can't remember exactly what I did. You know, I like how my hair looks when I do it this way. I should keep it in a bun kind of a deal more often, like a half up, half down kind of look, but um, that's not the look I'm going for today. Right. Okay. What I was getting it was butterfly clips. Oh my gosh. I was getting some butterfly clips because I butterfly it in two spots. As you can see here, I clip it up and I'm going to start as they do at the hairstylist. I'm going to start here at the bottom and so yeah my hair's pretty wavy as you can see i'm gonna have a sip of coffee now bear with me people mm. okay so this is on low i use this hot air brush on low and i kind of just go back and forth a little bit with it so you're gonna see me doing the bottom part of my hair so you know start there if you start from the top it will just you can't work it that way right you can't work from the top down some people do the way that I've learned was to take your hair out on an angle from your head. So it should be at this sort of, um, I guess, sort of parallel to, is that the right word? 
perpendicular to your head, 90 degree angle from your head. Gosh, as you can tell, my geometry is just not the sharpest after all this time. So I just do this layer. Is it a little bit damp? Yeah, it is. Is it still completely, uh, is it completely straight? Absolutely not. It's kind of not the point of this tool. This is a smoothing tool. And so that's mostly what it's used for. It will not take out all the body from your hair. Definitely not. That's what I like about it. And uh, I will just continue on with the other layers. And so here I go. I'm going to move on to the next one. And so a lot of people wonder, you know, what point should you do the heat styling? As you can see here, I put in the Rogaine first because my hair was somewhat dry from using the hair dryer. So I went ahead and put in all the Rogaine and then I finished my style because I felt my scalp was dry enough. Do you need to get to 100% dryness? No, you don't. Is it good to have a soaking wet scalp? Absolutely not. Although, you know, I've said this before, the actual literature, the Rogaine literature just says that you know, you can have a wet scalp. They just never clinically trialed it with a completely damp scalp. They've only clinically trialed it and it's proven to work on a dry scalp. Does that mean it won't work at all if your scalp is wet? No. And are we rushed sometimes? Yes. Real life means sometimes your hair's got to be a little bit damp and you're trying to get out the door. And so this is my routine. I'm trying to get out the door, as you guys will see, in 20 minutes. And, uh, yeah, I would just, I, I would put it on at an earlier stage. I'm totally fine with doing it that way. And it still works for me, as you can see. Okay, so I'm just going through the layers. And so I'm almost getting to the point where I'm done now. As I said, I'm not going for any kind of completely smooth look. If I wanted to do that, probably I would take a hot air, hot air, sorry, a flat iron to it after that. Like I said, I like the babyless line of um, appliances. I don't know if you guys agree or disagree. Like I do not spend at all. I feel like a hair dryer just blows hot air. It's totally not worth getting an expensive appliance. But for the actual other gadgets, I like to spend a bit more money. Ooh, my hair's so frizzy on this slide. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna smooth that out now. You guys are gonna see how this works on smoothing out hair. Um, but for something like this hot air dryer, you know, hot air tool, I don't like to go cheap. You know, I'll buy a cheap curling iron, I'll buy a cheap hair dryer, but for these particular things and a flat iron, for whatever reason, these are things I really want to last. And I feel like I use them enough to justify just spending a bit more. I don't get the bargain basement ones. And so, like I said, I've had this one for, mm, yeah, ages and ages and ages, and it just keeps going strong. I use the low setting. If you use a high setting, you will make your hair frizzier. So if you do want to use this tool, remember to keep it low. You know, you can kind of go this way with it to smooth that part out like wherever however you want to do it you know you can get some curls it's not that easy but you can get some beachy ways with this tool if you have the right kind of hair and you have the time to section it like any other tool you know you'll get a better result if you section it really finely but hey I don't have time for that I'm just going for like a, you know a kind of smoothed out look so if I were going into the office or I had meetings or whatever the case may be I would do this now I could fill in the back with like you know some fibers or some root spray but I am not going to I'm just going to kind of smooth out and use my fingers here to just smooth out whatever I'm not liking the look of and luckily my hair stays pretty good so that's pretty much the finished product what I'm going to do now is get out some got to be balm that's in the purple so there's one that's purple, which is kind of hard to find. I quite like this product though. And I'm just going to tamp down my edges. Oh my gosh, people, I'm getting gray hair. I'm starting to get, you can see one on the top there. I've got a lot of it. I don't know if I should dye my hair. I feel like it's that slippery slope. I don't know if I should start dyeing it. So I'm just using my hair a bit with the balm. And so that's just going to smooth it out a little bit more, give it a tiny bit more volume where I want it and uh, help the flyaways because we don't want those flyaways. And I'm just gonna, you know, finish my hair here. I've got a finishing touch, so hang around. Thank you so much for listening to all of this. Oh my goodness, thank you for sticking around this long, but I'm almost done. I'm getting to the end here. I'm gonna use this old toothbrush and I'm gonna tamp down those edges because we don't, I'm just sticking it in there. We don't want those edges flying everywhere. We wanna tamp these down and get them sticking nice because I'm not an animal. Are you an animal? We want this to look nice and sleek. So we're <laughs> We're just going to brush that down a bit and you can use this for your flyaways too. So that's what I'm doing. That is pretty much my look, people. So, um, you know, I'm going to be finishing up here. Thank you so, so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Love you guys so much. Thanks for following me here and uh, stick around for my next Rogaine video. It'll be coming soon. Okay. Bye.